For those that don't know, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus had a pretty big announcement earlier this week, where they are getting Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Rising. This is actually really cool because it's adding rollback netcode, crossplay, enhanced graphics, and they're going to give us a new season of games along with some really cool little small modes and like their online features, which is all neat and dandy. But would you believe that I like speculated almost all of this like a week ago? Uh, while talking with some friends, we just like, were speculating what's happening within the fighting game realm, and I said I think Grand Blue is going to have its blow up soon, especially with the announcement that came with that. I believe if I had a bingo card, I could have dabbed it that day. So I decided to go full throttle with this, and I created a full bingo card of what I think is going to happen for the rest of the year within the fighting game realm. Let's get into it. Also, if you haven't, if you can like subscribe to me, follow me elsewhere, that'd be really appreciated. Let's start this list with Guilty Gear Strive because it's the most obvious one. Guilty Gear Strive is probably the most popular fighting game as of right now or most played. So let's just talk about what the final character is going to be and that's probably just going to be Slayer. Slayer is the obvious choice. It's the, probably the most requested and there's been a lot of hints towards Slayer. Nothing right out, but it's pretty obvious he's going to be the final DLC character. I then think we're going to go into a pure silence. We're not going to hear anything for a long period of time. And then finally, at some announcement, either at EVO or maybe at like the end of Arc World Tour, we'll have some announcement that we are going to have a third season and the tag is going to be called Dead Are Rising, which is going to put a bunch of people into announcements but we won't find out anything because the next character will get released in 2024 king of fighters 15 will come out and finally just release the characters they've already previously announced there's going to be throughout the entire year it's going to be a while for all of them to be released but they are going to surprise us with orochi who is going to be another boss character and they are going to give us a boss rush mode just like they did with rugel they're going to do that with geese howard and orochi all three of them let's have a really cool boss fight mode i think it'd be absolutely sick we also are finally going to get the reveals of these two silhouettes, which one is going to be Athena, Athena in her original form, and then we are going to get a guest character, Jin Kazama, from Tekken as the final DLC character for KOF 15. NetherRealm Studios will finally come out with an announcement of an announcement of an event, which we will have all of the projects that they have been working on and what is going on in their future. The first thing that will come up in this event will be the trailer for the next Mortal Kombat movie, which will show off The Miz as Johnny Cage, Jade Cargill as Jade, and John Cho from Harold and Kumar as Kenshi, which sounds absolutely epic, and I'm more excited for John Cho than the rest of the cast. During this event, they will also have a very long segment on Mortal Kombat Onslaught and of how in-depth it is. They will show some gameplay, show off some special characters that are going to be released for it. They're also going to announce it's going to be available to be played on the PC, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. This is also going to be the announcement for Scorpion joining Multiverses, which uh, gets a kind of a groan in the crowd, but uh, after watching some gameplay, he looks really cool. They will do a fake out trying to end the event and they will slowly fade in the number three, announcing Injustice 3 along with four silhouettes in the background with Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, obviously, but a cloaked figure, which later on we will figure out that that is actually a custom creation character that we all are able to use in the story mode, which you can steal different powers and moves from all the characters to create your very own avatar. And this infuriates the entire community, however, they're okay with it because they announce Constantine, Beast Boy, and the Return of Shazam as characters. The DLC pre-order character will be Booster Gold, which is absolutely awesome, and I really hope this becomes true. The reason I'm making this list, but Grand Blue Fantasy Versus will have another announcement of just who's going to be released throughout this year. They're also going to announce that all the characters are going to be cheaper. Um, for those who want to buy these characters, they're not going to be as expensive as they were previously. They're going to be a more cheaper price around $4.99 like normal DLC characters not the almost $10 ones that we've been dealing with for like the last like two three years. Skull Girls will have its final character Marie go into early access in mid-February. They will then finally have her release somewhere around August right around when Evo's announced. Also at Evo this year we're going to go in to get the announcement for that Skull Girls 2 is in the development. Showing new and updated models for all the characters, and UN, Roxy, and Isaac being characters that are being worked on as well. And the game will be slated for early access in early 2024. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will come out of nowhere and make the announcement that they're doing another line of Amiibo. Uh, not that we asked for this, but they're going to do all of the 
alternate characters that we don't have, like the male Wii Fit Trainer, or the female versions of the Fire Emblem characters in all the other Koopa Kids. This is not going to go over well with the community, but it is nice that Smash is still being talked about in 2023. Dragon Ball Fighters will get an announcement for a rollback test. It will go over horribly, so much so that they're pushing it back to 2024 to look into it to make it better. Multiverses will have six new characters this year, which will be Yosemite Sam, the Joker, Samurai Jack, Godzilla, the Animaniacs as one group, and Bellatrix Lestrange. They also will show off their story mode, which will be ever ongoing. It's not the best, but very nice. Oh, they will also finally announce that it's coming to the Switch. At the end of EVO Grand Finals for Guilty Gear Strive this year, they are going to announce Guilty Gear Cross Blaze Blue, which will have the biggest pop reaction at EVO ever. It will be absolutely gargantuan, and I can't wait to be there to witness it. All we're going to get is a logo and a brief stare down between Ragna and Soul, and that is going to fade in early 2024. Them Fighting Herds is going to announce more of their DLC characters, which is going to be Calumet and Ribbon. They're also going to announce a special guest DLC character, which is going to be Dino from the Flintstones. Completely thrown off, but everyone gets really excited about it. Brawlhalla, once again, will break its record when it comes to prize pools, jacking it up to 1,350,000 this year. We also have some killer crossovers, including Cobra Kai, AEW, Street Fighter, again, and a bunch of characters from the Power Rangers. Fortnite will have multiple fighting game crossovers this year, including Ken, Luke, and M. Bison joining the Street Fighter roster, and Terry Bogart and Iori coming from King of Fighters. Mortal Kombat will have a full-fledged event this year with Fortnite, where they will actually have Shao Kahn show up and try to conquer the island. This will bring characters such as Katana, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Sonya, and of course Scorpion and Sub-Zero to fight off the Mad Conqueror. And as all bingo cards need, you need to have a free space. So I'm just going to say that Street Fighter VI will be at EVO this year. I think that is a guarantee. But while I'm here, let's talk of the games I also think are going to be at EVO. Now, I do think my opinion is going to change on this throughout the year, but this is what I think right now. And that's going to be, it's going to be Street Fighter VI, Tekken 7, Guilty Gear Strive, Multiverses, DNF Duel, King of Fighters 15, Them's Fighting Herds, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and... The new Naruto Ninja Storm's connection. Yep, Ninja Storm 5 will finally come to EVO. And while we're talking about Naruto, let's talk about Naruto Ninja Storm since it's been all over the place. I think we're going to have a new standard here for arena fighters. Naruto Ninja Storm's connections will have rollback netcode, crossbite, and even a world tour. The roster will be significantly smaller than usual. However, they're going to announce a three-year plan for DLC characters, and we are planning on trying to make it as competitive as they can to just keep the game running and more fun, similar in the same vein of, you know, like what Xenovorce is doing, where the game is still going after all these years. Tekken A will have a brief announcement of Evo showing off just a few characters. Nina Williams, Yoshimitsu, and the return of Bruce, Christy Montanero, and Ogre. The return of those characters will be exciting, however, we will get bummed out very quickly when you see that it's being pushed back to 2024. And that's not all we're going to hear from Tekken this year. We're also going to get an announcement of a collection of Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, and Tekken Tag Tournament, the original. They are going to be all in a collection where you can play online with Rollback Next. Melty Blood Type Lumina will have new DLC inspired by Fate Zero. Xander, Galgamesh, and Lancelot will all be added. They also make an announcement that they are currently looking to crossplay for all platforms. So Undernight will have its next installment, and it's going to be called Undernight the Seventh ROM 17.10. This will be a brand new move for the series where they're going to have tag mechanics in the game just like blaze blue cross tag and they're going to bring in a lot of fan favorites from different animes of the isekai genre including sword art online dot hack and persona 5 yeah. konami will continue their trend while releasing a new collection and this time around it's going to be bloody roar including bloody roar 1 2 and all versions of 3 and 4 they are going to release all of that but only a few of them will have access to rollback netcode including bloody roar 2 and bloody roar extreme fray makers the indie platformer will announce some new characters coming to the game which will include but not limit shovel knight from shovel knight madeline from celeste zagreus from hades and pebbles from five force fighters marvel vs. capcom 3 will have a massive update in the community where modders were able to create their own workshop where now anyone can upload any character and create any character to go into their game this will revitalize the community so much that it rivals the numbers when it came out 
at the Japanese Fighting Game Roundtable this year, Virtual Fighter will finally be announced from Sega. They are going to show off the logo, show the first appearance of Akira, and they're going to say that it's going to have the most customizable skins, costumes, and accessory ever in a fighting game. EA will come out with a collection of all of the original Def Jam games and a teaser for the new Def Jam game, Def Jam The New Underground. This will hint towards a war between the newer and older generation of hip-hop, including new characters such as Rihanna, 2 Chains, and Young John. Power Rangers Battle for the Good will make an announcement for their next season, which will have Ivan Ooze, Andros the Space Red Ranger, and Astromina. They also will make the hint later in the year of their next crossover event, which will be with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, doing Leonardo and Shredder in their Ranger forms. And lastly, at the end of the Capcom tour this year, we're going to get an announcement for a new Power Stone. Showing off new models for Ed, Coolia, and Kraken, they will announce that more details will be coming later next year. The chances of me winning in this bingo card are super slim, but it was fun to do. So let me know in the comments which of these are the most likely and which ones are not. Or make your own bingo card and tag me, because I'd love to see it.